Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles. I wanted to bring you guys a video on how to harvest sassafras root. I got a pretty easy way that I like to harvest my sassafras root. And I usually do it with just a knife. Here, this little green sapling that you see in front of us is sassafras. This is a small sassafras tree or bush. Sassafras can get to varying heights in the eastern woodlands. Usually you'll find them anywhere from around 4 to 12 feet tall, but every once in a while you'll get lucky and find one that's 30 feet tall or more. Okay, and once you've got to your sassafras tree, and you found one that you want to harvest, the thing we want to harvest is the root. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and clear away the, clear away the debris, and then clear away any loose dirt that you can with your hands. If you're going to be harvesting something bigger, you're probably going to need a shovel or a trowel. And here you can see we've started to expose the root. So at this point, you just want to take your knife and be very careful and just loosen up the soil. You'll see that once we loosen up the soil, a good portion of it is now loose. Now, we just want to grab and then pull. And once we've done that, this is what we have. We have the big section of the root. Okay, and then once you've got your sassafras roots and you're at home, go ahead and get them to your sink. Of course, just wash them up really good. And what I like to do after I get a preliminary washing, I like to go ahead and just take a brush. A brush kind of like this will do just fine. You can use a toothbrush or anything of that nature. And this just helps to remove any uh, loose bark or any loose dirt or dirt that's stuck on there that we couldn't get off very well. So I just want to go ahead and wash these up. Scrub them up really good with the brush. And then once you've washed them up, just go ahead and pat them dry with a paper towel. We're going to get wet anyways. If you want to go ahead and skip this step, you can. I just like to do it to see how much dirt I actually got off of them and see how dirty they still are. Okay, now you may be able to see it. There's still a little bit of dirt up in here. So I'm just going to take this back to the sink and I'm going to wash it off. Okay, and then once you've got them completely... All right, once you've got them completely rinsed off, go ahead and get a knife, set them down on a cutting board, and bang through them. They're going to fly. They're really tough to cut. All right, once you've got your sassafras roots cut up, go ahead and get yourself about two cups of water into a saucepan, put it on the stove, and get it to boiling. And once we get this boiling, I'll come back to you. All right, you can see our water's boiling now, so all we're going to do so we're just going to throw our sassafras roots right into the water and we're just going to boil this until it's a reddish brown in color okay you can see the color of our water starting to change now it's getting this kind of pinkish hue to it, it's real light in color the smell of sassafras is going to be getting stronger and stronger at this point and now really at this point it's just kind of a matter of getting it to the point you actually like it. Everybody has a different personal preference. I'm actually going to turn my burner down, it's starting to get really hot here. Holy cowabunga. But everybody has different personal preferences as far as the strength of their tea is concerned. And the darker this water becomes, the stronger it's going to be. So that will kind of give you an idea of about how dark you want it, I hope. Okay, and here you can see our water's changed to a dark reddish brown. And this is the point I like it. Really good strong smell of sassafras. So all we want to do now is we just want to pick those roots out. Alright, at this point your sassafras tea is done. You can actually strain some of these smaller particles out of here if you feel like it with like a coffee filter or something. I don't usually worry about it. So you can just go ahead and pour yourself a cup. And once it's done, you can either put it in the fridge and sweeten it and cool it down, drink it cold, 
or you can drink it warm, it doesn't really matter. I like mine warm and I like mine cold. Still a little hot, but yeah, that's good. So I thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.